Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? I'm not real nice to listen to right now, but hopefully you can hear me. I'm going to try to move this all again and make sure I don't lose my camera this time. There we go. Okay. So I debated, as you can tell, I am sick. Uh, I have been sick since the flight home from Memphis this weekend. Um, I was running a fever on the plane, which was pretty freaking awesome. Let me tell you. Have you ever flown with a fever? Yeah. Um, okay. So let's see who we have here. Good evening, everyone. My name is Marissa. I am also known as the Crafty Heifer. Thank you all for coming and joining me for just a little while. We probably won't go the full hour tonight. Um, we're just going to kind of go with how long I can feel I can go on. Um, but I thank you all for spending part of your Wednesday here with me. Um, welcome, Numbum. I freaking love the name. I, you're new. I know I haven't seen you before. So I'm super excited to have you on the channel. Hello, Rajul. I hope you're doing well. Um, let's see here. Thank you, Rebecca, so much. You're always so kind. Um, and I really do appreciate it. Um, I know I haven't been around like all week long, all last week. Some of you know where I was. Um, obviously, I don't sound like this all the time, or at least I hope I don't sound like this all the time. But yeah. <laughs> Robin, hey girl. Odd but nice. Thank you for coming. Hi, Susan. I haven't seen you in a long time. How are you doing? Hey, Carla, you as well. Look at this. Like, I got people coming in I haven't seen in forever, y'all. <coughs> <clears throat> oh, you're Lindy from Australia. So you were Lindy, uh, Aussie diamond painter Lindy. Is that one correct? Am I thinking of the right person? If so, I love the name change. I think it's awesome. Obviously, I like to have fun with my names as well. Um, yes, I did get my nails done before we went to Memphis. So, and I tried a new style. It's called a coffin nail. So I don't know if you can see it's like, shaped kind of like it's wider down here and then it comes to a point to like a coffin so um yeah i tried something new i really like them they're a little bit too long now to type but i thought they made my fat fingers look skinnier <laughs> welcome sarah you can work and lurk no problem there's mayhem mayhem can you move are you sore <laughs> Oh, Carla, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I changed it a couple months ago. You're probably like, who is this heifer that is, keeps like posting stuff? I don't, I'm not even subscribed to her. Yeah, Aussie Artist Lindy. That's what it was. Okay, so what I'm going to start with today is I'm going to start with some of the stuff that I got. Um, I'm going to tell you about the trip to Memphis. Um, you guys, seriously. Mm. So we're going to start. I think we should start with swag, right? Y'all want to see the stuff I brought, right? Like everybody wants to see the stuff. So I did bring home some St. Jude branded swag that I'm not going to show you tonight because it's going to be part of my 500 subscriber giveaway. And it is also going to be some incentives to help raise money for St. Jude. So our site, um, this year we didn't start uh, raising money until like almost May last year. This year we get to start March the 2nd. So we're going to start raising money. I'm going to start raising money for St. Jude March the 2nd when our website launches. Um, they also got us an app this year, which is something new, an app for our phone. So we'll be able to basically all the stuff I had to do on the computer last year, all of that we can be done on the phone this year. So I'm super excited about that. So the first thing I got, you guys will remember, those of you that have been around for a while, you know how I love my coffee mugs, okay? And everywhere I go, I get a coffee mug and I get a Christmas ornament. So last year I got a wooden Christmas ornament and it was the Peabody duck on it. And um, it was, you know, all like a laser cut wooden ornament. So I got that. And then I also had gotten a coffee mug from St. Jude. So this year I found they still had some coffee mugs. I was super excited. So now I got this one. Their theme this year was the Nutcracker. So there he is. And I don't know, can you see? Yeah, you can see the white lines just very faintly. It's like a white on white kind of lines there. And if you turn it around, it says Happy Holidays. And then it has the little St. Jude baby logo 
and then the inside is a dark christmas green it's really pretty it's like a it's showing up more jade on the camera but it's actually like a darker forest green and it's a nice big cup y'all know i like my big cups yeah i know right keep it away from dearly she'll steal it because it's got a nutcracker on it and the christmas ornament that i got also has uh the nutcracker and clara on it so i'm super excited they match this year so there was that one and then we got to go and you guys if you're ever in memphis and you get the chance to do it go to the civil rights museum i'm going to put together a video i have some video footage i have some pictures and things but we got to go to the american civil rights museum they have it at the hotel where martin luther king jr was shot so at the lorraine motel and they have built in the museum into what remains of the hotel they tore most of it down but the rest of the museum looks like that and you guys it is amazing we were in there for about two and a half hours and we didn't get to see everything such a good museum so while i was there i also got i got another coffee mug because you know heifer can't have too many coffee mugs oh maybe huh okay uh, but yeah, so it's it's a really cool museum. When you walk up, you'll see in the in the video and the pictures and stuff. When you walk up, you're literally looking at the front of the hotel and you're looking up onto the balcony of the room that he was standing outside of when he was shot. And then you get to see towards the end of the tour, you get to see the insides of the room. And then there's another part across the street, which is where the shooter shot him from. Um, we didn't get to go to that part because we got there at 2.30 and they closed at 5. So we didn't get to go see that part. We just ran out of time. But I got this mug and it's just like a general Memphis. So there's the Lorraine Motel and that sign is still standing. And then you can see like down here, the storefronts. This is like one of the houses of blues. Uh, the general store, it'll sh it shows Beale Street, which we did get to go to Beale Street. And of course, it's got Memphis with the blues notes on it, the cars, the bridge. This is the bridge across the Mississippi into Arkansas. B.B. Um, King's Blues Club, we got to go by there. We didn't go in. And then it's got a steamboat because they are right on, uh, literally, we stayed at the Peabody. And the Peabody is three blocks off the Mississippi River. So we got to go down. We got to go drive past the river, basically. And we got to see it. So... And this one is actually <coughs> just a little bit, excuse me, guys, I'm going to be coughing just so you guys know, just kind of bear with me if you, if you don't mind, I'm sorry. There's not a lot I can do about it. I'm taking all of the Sudafed that I can take. Um, I'm actually maxed out for the day. So we're going to go with it. <laughs> hey, Mickey, how are you? So yeah, so this one, the Memphis is just slightly bit bigger than the St. Jude mug. But so I've got those two and then I got a Christmas ornament from the museum as well. And I got the Lorraine motel symbol. And mine doesn't apparently autofocus. Sorry about that. But it says the National Civil Rights Museum welcomes all. And it's another wooden one. I thought I'd get a wooden one to match my one from the Peabody last year. So I was super, super impressed with the museum. Now the museum is part of the Smithsonian um, organization of museums. So it is incredibly well done. They have stuff in there. They have like things in there I'd never seen. They have the bus that Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat. They have that bus in there. Um, they have the bus, you guys remember learning about, those of you that are Americans, I don't know how much they taught this outside of America, but for those of you that are Americans, do you remember the Freedom Riders? And they had that one bus that was bombed and caught fire while they were on it. Um, they have that bus in there as well. So they have a lot of really cool memorabilia and lots and lots of stories, things I've never even heard or seen. So it is definitely an awesome museum to visit if you're ever in Memphis. I would highly recommend it. Um, so let's talk about the flight, you guys. I'm gonna get my stitching out, or my, uh, not my stitching, my, crochet out so my blanket has not been touched since last week 
So this is where I finished last week. <coughs> um, and I haven't touched it since then. So um, if you are past row three, you are doing great. I don't even know what color comes next, to be real honest with you. Let me look. Let's see. We're on row three. Black. We're going to go navy blue. Okay. Let me turn my work. My desk is a hot mess. My life is a hot mess right now. Um, all I've been doing, I got home, uh, we got home on Saturday and all I've done since Saturday is pretty much sleep. So I apologize if I've missed any lives, any uh, videos. I'm trying to catch up, but I'm pretty much sleeping, you guys. That's about all I can do right now. Um, okay, so let's talk about the flight. So we get to the airport, no problem. We get parked, we get into the airport. Uh, we meet up with uh, what are called St. Saint Jude ambassadors. And those are the guys that are, um, they make a pledge to raise a certain dollar amount every year for St. Jude. And they um, then go and run in the races after they've raised that dollar amount and they get to wear a St. Jude bib and represent the St. Jude brand. Um, and we got to meet our new rep for the Dallas area and his name is Shorty. And he was an absolute delight. Uh, he hung out with us all weekend and just a really, really good guy. Uh, so we're super happy to have him on board. And then, um, sorry, I'm totally missing comments, I think. Let me make sure I didn't miss anybody. Somebody, I need a shot of Dak Daniels. Hey, dearly. Um, yes and no, Mayhem. Yes and no. <laughs> I'm better than I was, but not as great as I could be. Um, anyway, okay, you guys. So we get on this plane, right? And it's actually not a packed flight. So that was the good news number one. We had plenty of seats. And we get on there. I get my stitching out and all that kind of stuff because I'd taken cross stitch to work on because blankets and things are just too big to take when you're traveling on an airplane. And no lie, you guys, it was cloudy and overcast here, okay, on Thursday. And it, the wind was pretty high. So we knew we were going to have to, when, when it's like that in Texas, you have to, like, take off. Like, you can't, there's none of this, like, slow, gradual rising, right? You kind of have to punch it. <sighs> Y'all, I swear to you, this pilot had to have been a Navy pilot that flew on an aircraft carrier. Because we didn't punch it coming out of DFW. We punched it and went vertical. All right. Y'all, we went poof, like this. We were literally like, you know, those roller coasters that kind of start going upside down or like go up on a nice steep climb and you're, you're like laying back in your seat. He had this plane vertical. I could see the front of the plane laying in my seat. No lie. All right. So that's how we started. And then... <laughs> Yeah, it was Top Gun. It was straight up a Top Gun moment. He didn't even use all of the runway. He just, he used about a quarter of it, I think. And there we went. Um, and then we have turbulence because it's cloudy the whole way, right? So we have all this turbulence and things like that. They get about a quarter of the drink served and then they have to go sit down and then they get another quarter served and they got to go sit down and all of that kind of stuff. And then we start descending into memphis and it is complete cloud cover you can't see anything you can't even see uh we couldn't even see the end of the wings on the plane it was that cloudy right so we get ready and we're, we're descending and you can kind of feel yourself go down and the little ding goes off to turn off your big devices which means you're below ten thousand feet um and so then we keep descending and then all of a sudden we go vertical again out of the descent okay at this point, I am freaking out because the two most dangerous parts of a flight, and if you're scared of flying, I'm going to tell you this, and I'm sorry. The two most dangerous parts of a flight are takeoff and landing, okay? We basically aborted a landing, which is never a good sign, okay? Something is always wrong when you abort a landing. Like, it is not done very often, okay? And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, like... 
Okay, so we take off, we go back vertical. So we're nose down and we went nose up and climbed back up above 10,000 because the little dinghy went off again <coughs> in about three seconds. And we're on a 747. And we get up there and we start banking. All right. We are banking and we are pulling G's, you guys. Like, I felt like I was on a roller coaster and I love roller coasters. Don't get me wrong. But I know when I'm on a roller coaster, I am strapped in and it's not going to fall out of the sky. All right. <laughs> we are banking. We're pulling G's. I can feel the force of it. And I'm actually starting to get nauseous. <laughs> and I don't get motion sick ever. And I was starting to get nauseous. And I was just like, oh, my goodness. And the pilot comes on and he's like, so sorry about that, folks. Um, we had to abort the landing. And I'm like, don't tell people that. Jesus. What are you doing? Trying to give these people a heart attack? And he goes, so sorry about that, folks. We had to abort the landing. They were bringing us in too hot on the plane in front of us. So what happens is, like, if you've ever seen the planes line up, so, like, you have a plane here that's descending, and they're at, like, 5,000, and then you have one above them at 7, one above them at 9, but there's got to be enough room in between the two planes this way so that they don't, um, so you're not getting the turbulence from their um, wake. So basically their jet fuel wake. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I hope I'm making sense. So basically we were in this, this plane's wake and that's why it was so, we had so much turbulence. And so they pulled us out um, because we were too close to the plane in front of us. And... <laughs> I was just like, oh my goodness. So we circle for like 10 minutes, pulling some G's. Um, and they finally puts us on the ground, right? Are you ready for this? <laughs> Y'all, I can't. Oh my goodness. I can only laugh about it because otherwise. <laughs> this is why I think he was on an aircraft carrier. So usually a plane will sit down and it'll kind of like gradually sit, right? And then they'll put the front down and then you, you know, then they hit the brakes. No, 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 no. Top gun over there. Sets the plane down and hits the brakes. <laughs> we only used half the runway. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. It was so bad. <laughs> so bad um i can honestly say i've not had a flight like that in ever i don't think i've ever had one like that and i was just like i was kind of like one of those people i wanted to get out and kiss the ground kind of <laughs> i'm telling y'all what <laughs> it was it was bad so this is how we get to memphis oh my goodness yeah, um, at least I can laugh about it, right? <laughs> so we get to Memphis, and um, they have charter buses there to pick all everybody up. They check you in and all that kind of stuff. We get to the hotel. We get checked in the hotel, y'all. The Peabody, it is very nice. The beds were super comfortable. We had to turn the air conditioner on because it was so bleeping hot in our room. We got there and our room was at 79 degrees. And y'all, I'm a big girl. I can't handle that. I'm not in an artificial air 79 degrees. <laughs> and so, um, I don't know what his name was. I didn't even say thank you like I normally do. I just kept going. <laughs> I was just like... I guess thank you for not killing me. Um, but yeah, anyway, so we get there, we get checked in and um, we had decided to meet for lunch and there was this place right across the street, huge letters that said margaritas. And after that flight, we all needed one. So we walk over there and um it's a Mexican food place and we have the food. We were like, okay, we'll try it. You know, their barbecue is not so good, but we'll see what their Mexican food is like. It was actually pretty decent. 
I'm going to give them that. That Mexican food place is actually pretty decent. The Texans don't trust Tex-Mex outside of uh, Texas, just so y'all know. Um, anyway, so we had that. We had a margarita. We walked down to the Civil Rights Museum and did all of that. And then we came back. We did get the duck march on video. Um, one of the girls got it uh, for us on video. So you guys will get to see that. And then um, we went out to dinner uh, to a place called the Majestic Grill, and it was pretty good. Um, those of you that are following me on Instagram, you saw my pink cocktail that I had. That is the St. Jude special cocktail. And it is really, really good. And so I had one of those. Um, and the cool thing about that drink that the Peabody does is it's, it's a $10 drink. But four dollars of that drink goes back to St. Jude. So I'll buy a drink when it's a little more expensive, but that I know that it goes back to the place where it should. Um, yeah, it was a good pink cocktail, too. And so we did that. And then we went out to dinner and um, came back. And I had asked, I, you know, when I was looking around to find out what was what there was to do. I um, had asked if we could go up. I saw that they had, um, sorry guys, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place. I saw that in the summertime, they have parties on the rooftop of the Peabody. And so I asked if we could go up on the roof because a lot of places like that, they close the roof in the winter. And she was the, basically the lady was like, as long as the elevator will take you, yes, you can go. It's closed at certain times, but yeah, you can go. And so we went up, we went up in the dark. And I never did make it back up because you can see the Mississippi from up there. And so I was going to go back up and get you guys some footage, but I didn't do that. But you guys are going to have at night footage. And um, we got to see the Duck Palace. No lie, you guys. Okay. So you guys, I told you about the ducks, right? We know about the ducks. They're housed on the roof. But it's not like a little like house. Like it's a freaking palace. Okay. You'll see it. And you can go around on the back side and you can see they've got it all like glassed in and you can see them in there hanging out. <laughs> <coughs> oh, good night, Robin. Thank you so much for coming. Um, yeah, so you can see them. They're all in there. They're all hanging out. It's yeah, it was interesting. So we went up there on the roof. It was super cold. We did go down Beale Street. So you guys will be able to hear some of the music and things like that. Um, a big group of them went out, or well, most of them went out um, on Friday night down to Beale Street and had fun. And there's like apparently some disco there. And a lot of them went to that. I went to bed because I was already not feeling well. Um, so like a fuddy daddy grandma, I went to bed. But um, we got up Friday morning and we had our breakout sessions and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I saw some people come in. Hi, Opera. Uh, we did our breakout sessions. We went to the hospital. We got to go to the gift shop. All of those kinds of things. I met a lot of people this year, you guys. There were a lot of new people there. Um, so I did get to meet quite a few uh, people from most of the walks. I think I met at least one person. Um, so we had a really good time there. And then on Friday night, they had the awards banquet and basically what they do is they um, rank us by how much money we have raised at the end of the year so last year dallas was number five in the nation out of 65 walks uh, this year we came in number nine out of 65 walks um, some walks had some really big years so our aim is to get back up into the top five this year um, but we did get our banner. They give you a banner and you get a little plaque and everything like that. Um, so we're going to do that. And we had a really nice sit down dinner where the butter was shaped like ducks. And um, I meant to use the um, soap that was also shaped like a duck, but I forgot. 
Sorry, guys. I was going to bring that home for a prize. Oh, I'm sorry, Elizabeth. I don't know if it does it push notifications out. If I go live on StreamYards, it is connected to my YouTube channel. So I would think it does. I don't know. Um, and it could be just the notifications are messed up. I haven't been getting notifications for a lot of people. And then I go online and I see that they have posted a video or something and didn't get a notification for it. So it could be that too. But yeah, so overall, we had a really good time. We got up Saturday morning. Um, they had like a really nice uh, spread out. If it soaks like a duck and walks like a duck, it must be a Peabody duck. <laughs> pretty much. That's pretty much the case, yes. So I'm working on getting that video put together and edited for you guys. Like I said, it'll be video. It'll be some... Um, pictures and some things like that from everybody uh we really didn't have a lot of time once we hit the ground on friday morning there was not a lot of time to record anything and so i was hoping to do kind of like a little vlog and that just did not work when i did have time it wasn't loud it was too loud and all that kind of stuff so you love to crochet but have no reason to it's too warm for shawls and blankets well, you're in Australia. Are you in South Australia or North Australia? Like the southern or the, the northern part of the continent. Yeah, so, um, but we did have a good time. Like I said, I did meet a lot of people this year, um, which was, you know, last year I was kind of very, not standoffish, but a little more selective, I guess. Um, just trying to like take everything in. There were 500 of us there this year which is a huge number of people. And I'm not going to lie, I, on by Friday afternoon, I was on overload. I had too much information, too many people. And I had to go like take a breather in the room for a good 10 minutes um, before we went to dinner. You're in the northern, gotcha. <clears throat> so what I do in Texas is I pretty much crochet in the winter now. And then I do small things like little squares and things like that in the summer so that it's not um, on me. Because like this blanket, if it wasn't on the table, I would have to have it in my lap and it would just be too hot in the summertime to do. Okay, so um, we got on the plane to go to come home and um, we... There was only one direct flight out of Memphis coming back. And so, and that was at nine o'clock in the morning. We needed to be there. And um, so we get on the flight and the flight, we go from Memphis to Tampa. And we flew over South Georgia and then out into the Gulf. So I'm going to have some ocean shots for you. You guys, that's the first time I've seen the, the ocean in a very long time. Um so I got some shots of that. I got some shots of us coming into Tampa, which was really pretty. The sun had started shining and it was like 70 degrees in uh, Tampa, which was fantastic. And um, Heifer, is that cocktail sold everywhere? No, it is not. It is exclusively sold at the bar at the Peabody. I wish it was and I wish I could tell you what all was in it. I know it's pineapple and vodka and something else maybe pomegranate i think it's pomegranate um and so we uh we got to tampa we had a three-hour labor in tampa so we basically um ate there at the gate and um i was i had started running a fever on the plane from memphis to tampa and then we get on the plane for to come home to dallas from Tampa to Dallas. It's a two hour and 45 minute flight, y'all. I love tiny humans, okay? I would not raise money for St. Jude if I did not love tiny humans. There were six or seven children under the age of three on that flight. And one of them literally, and I do mean it literally the way it sounds, literally screamed the entire two hours 
and 45 minutes home. I had on those big noise canceling headphones and my volume was turned all the way up and that poor baby screamed the entire way. There was an infant, like he couldn't have been more than four to six weeks old. That kid screamed when we took off and when we landed and he slept the rest of the time. That other one, mm -mm. we get to the we get to the airport in Dallas, and it's you know basically it's closed down because we fly into Love Field. And they close at like eight o'clock. And that kid is in the airport and is still screaming. So I don't know what was going on, but that was not a very pleasant experience. Um, the guy in front of me, I'm sensitive to smells even when I'm not sick. The guy in front of me was wearing enough cologne for two people and the chick behind me was wearing enough perfume for two people. So that was fun too. And I kept coughing and everybody is like, oh, she's got the coronavirus. And I'm like, listen, I'm gonna cough whether I'm healthy or not because of all of this extra um, flowery scent. Well, that's what we'll call it. <laughs> By the end, I was getting a little salty. I was definitely ready to be home. Um, yeah, and I didn't, I did not feel well. I was just like, oof, that is, I hate being sick and not being at home. That's like one of the worst things for me. So I was definitely happy to finally get home and then I slept. Anywho, all right, we are 34 minutes in. We might go all the way. Okay. Um, so I am going to open this up because my voice is starting to run out. I'm going to open this up for your Wednesday wins. So for those of you that haven't been with us, this is a new segment that I've been doing, obviously called Wednesday wins. And what it is, is it is a way for us to celebrate each other's successes, to celebrate each other's, uh, things to be celebrated. So anything this this week that happened to you that is positive, that is good, did you meet a goal? <clears throat> did you not get arrested for killing somebody? Um, any of those kinds of things, I want to hear about it so that we can celebrate together with you guys. So my Wednesday win, I have a couple of them, is that I didn't die on the flight. That's always a, a plus. Um, it was a very good conference and we got number nine in the nation, which is nothing to sneeze at. And um, I am back with you guys now um, doing these kinds of things. So um, although I'm allergic to Tennessee, which is what all of this is, um, those are my Wednesday wins. So I want to hear y'all's Wednesday wins. Let's go. Any day now. And while y'all do that. I'm going to pull up. So there's a cross stitcher that I uh, watch on floss. She has a floss tube. And she um, has been reading this book. And it's called A Year of Positive Thinking, Daily Inspiration, Wisdom, and Courage. And it's by Cindy Spiegel. And I found it. She Once she showed us what it is, um, I had watched a couple of her floss tubes. And it's available on Amazon Unlimited, the Kindle Unlimited. And so I wanted to download this because it's got some really, really great things in here. Um, let's see, what month am I in here? February. Today is the 26th. So this is one that she had read. Um, and I thought that it was appropriate. So February the 23rd, gratitude and perfection. Some days you feel like you failed at life because you haven't done it perfectly. You said the thing you shouldn't have, or you didn't have the one thing you should have, or you didn't do the one thing you should have. When that happens, consider this instead. You are human and you are figuring out life with as much resilience and grace as you can muster. You made it to another day because you were supposed to be here. And in the moments when the weight of your perceived imperfection feels especially heavy, practice gratitude. Say thank you for what you've done right. 
that graciousness will shift everything because gratitude is reciprocal. Bestow it on yourself always, but especially when you need it the most. And that one just really hit me. I thought that was really powerful um, thing to do. And I'm reading, I've gone back and read. And so there's like one of those for every day of the, of the year. And so if you guys want to get that book, I'll try to remember to go back and, and link everything. And I've missed all kinds of comments. So let's see here. Let's see what someone's day wins were. Hello, Anita. Welcome. Thank you so much for subscribing. So Dearly's Wednesday win is she trimmed and filed her guinea pig's nail successfully for the first time. Yeah, Ralphie, who's Dearly's guinea pig, got a spa day day today, and um, he wasn't real happy with it, but he, I guess he let her do it, and she was successful. So yay, Dearly, Wednesday win. <coughs> hey, Crashly, how are you doing, girl? And you're not bleeding from it. That's definitely a Wednesday win. <laughs> so creative. Hubby and I joined the gym and worked out this week. We are on the road to being spelt. Very nice. I know she's um, a little sore today, but that's okay because we're going to be grateful for it, right? Oh, no problem, Crashly. Thank you so much for coming by. I need to talk to you when you have a second. Um, Elizabeth says, first up, when dogs got into a flight, nobody, fight, nobody got hurt, me included. That's always good. And she slept till noon today for no reason at all. Nice. Yes. I like to sleep in late. <laughs> Way to go. So num bum, Lindy says, my Wednesday win, I started a new eating regime and I didn't cheat all day. That is awesome. Congratulations, Lindy. Way to go. Hey, Mindy, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Let's see here. Wednesday wins. Snow day. Mindy got a snow day in, in the north? Really? <laughs> Does that mean you just called in? Or did you actually get a snow day? So the other thing that I usually do as well is I usually do a segment called News from the Tube. But I'm going to be honest with y'all. I ain't got nothing today. Okay. I know Rachel started her um, DPAL, DP along, I think is what she's calling it. Um, your first actual snow day this year. That is awesome. We still haven't had a snow day. It's pretty sad. Um, anyway, Rachel started her deep howl. Um, a lot of people are, Mindy, are you still doing your, uh, you and, um, Maritza, are you still doing the, um, who's a call it? Y'all, I'm fading. Can you tell? <coughs> Aubra sat through an entire meeting without throat punching anyone and without drinking any rum. Frankly, it was a bit of a miracle. <laughs> I love you, Aubra. Oh, my goodness. Good job. Good job. Some days, some days that is, that's the only way you can get through it. Uh, you had no idea what you were doing, but you didn't hurt yourself, Mayhem. That's always a good plan. Um, the giveaway is Saturday in your live. Okay. So Mindy at Mindy's Diamond Moment and Maritza at Kiss My Crafts um, are doing a Hannah Lynn uh, Diamond Paint Along and they're doing their giveaway on Saturday in Mindy's Live, which is six o'clock central time, which makes it seven o'clock eastern time. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I said that right. Either way, um, y'all check that out. If uh, you like the Hannah Lynn's, I did not have a Hannah Lynn. And it's not really my cup of tea. Um, I think they're really cute, but I don't really want to do any of them, if that makes sense. Um, but some of the ones that I have seen other people do are super, super cute. So I do like the one... Um, 
where it's like she's a little bit of a chubby girl and she's on in the cupcake in on kind of both the one with the cupcake okay i like the one with the cupcake <laughs> y'all know that type of meeting just send a memo it's easier and does it right just send me an email it won't last for two hours and i don't have to pretend i have to go to the bathroom and have a uti just to get out of it i know those kinds of meetings i might have tried that trick a couple of times as well um anywho <laughs> susan's wednesday win is she didn't push the buy button susan look at you in your control we are all so proud and this is from the group of enablers like we're the worst kind of enablers um so yeah so that is great susan congratulations on not pushing the buy button i'm all about self-control so i started cross stitching and yes i spent a little bit more than i probably should have to start well restart i should say um but i you know bought for my projects that i'm working on and then i bought um i got the stand because it was just such a great deal and let me go and grab the one that I took with me to uh, Memphis. And I'll show you guys how much I got done on the plane. Give me just a second. Okay. So I also have to film a floss tube this week. Because, <laughs> you know, so many hours in the day. So this is the one that I'm working on. Nope, that's upside down, isn't it? Let's try it again. So it's that one right there. I thought he was super, super cute. It is the Hufflepuff Badger. I know y'all are shocked I'm working on a Harry Potter one. Everybody calm down. It'll be all right. Um, I traveled with it in this bag. And I'll show you guys where I got these and everything like that. This actually worked amazingly well. And this bag is fairly resilient. So, um, this was my setup on the plane. So I have the pattern like this and what I would do, and you guys, I want you guys to notice this. Can you see what I'm using as a needle minder? That's my St. Jude pen from last year. I thought that was for the St. Jude conference. I thought that was the perfect needle minder. And because it's already, it was already a magnet, I didn't have to change anything. So St. Jude needle minder, this will be one of the things that I'll give away in my 500 uh, subscriber giveaway is a St. Jude pen. You'll get a new one. Um, so this is what I worked on. This was a completely fresh start. So I didn't get a whole lot done, but I did get a start on it. Um, but considering this is basically this whole section here will be completely covered when I'm done. Um, I thought that that was pretty good. And so what I would do is when I was stitching, I was able to prop it up against the seat in front of me without the needing the tray. And then I was able to take my clip and pop my pattern on like that. And then um, my extra floss, so like my extra of this color, I just had wound around here so that I could reload my needle as I needed to. And then these were the two colors that I needed the most, my extra needles, my uh, scissors, my little, um, they're little manicure scissors, but I figured if they got confiscated, at least they were like a dollar and I wouldn't have to worry about throwing them away. And they worked perfect. And then I also took an extra needle minder, which is this one. And that is the one that Fiona Diamond in the Rough, it's one of the ones that she made me and sent me. So that's a resin uh, one that she made. And it's one of my absolute favorites. And so I took it with me just in case I needed an extra. So yeah. So I, the, the packing worked great because I could just literally just do that, throw it all back in the bag and put it in my backpack and we were ready to go. 
So that's how long it took me to the D plane. <coughs> but yeah, so guys, I'm going to go ahead. Um, I guess we can chat. It's only 10 minutes. We can chat for 10 minutes, right? Surely we can think of something to say for 10 minutes. <coughs> oh, goodness. Uh, laughter burns calories too. It absolutely does. Odds, uh, excuse me. I don't know what that was. Odd got to the fourth row on both of her blankets. Girl, you were like basically have already made one full blanket, but because you're doing two. <laughs> um, as a Wisconsinite, I'm legally required to support badgers at all times. <laughs> ah, bruh. I've missed you so, so much, girl. Um, yeah, the packing, like, went really, really good. Who changed the emojis again? Where did my adorable little devil go? So, Odd, it is not the only one I'm working on. But if you ask me right at this minute where my other ones are, I cannot tell you that. Because when I was packing, I was, like, furiously throwing everything together. Because I packed on Wednesday night um, before I went live last Wednesday. So, I don't actually know where the rest of my stuff is right now. But I got the lion for Gryffindor, and I got the eagle for Ravenclaw. And then I have to go back and get the snake for Slytherin. But they were buy two, get one free. So I'm going to wait. Um, that's better. I'm going to wait on the Slytherin until I get at least one of the other ones done. So what I'm doing, basically, just like my diamond paintings, I only allow myself to have five diamond paintings in the house at one time. So that's the ones that I'm working on and the ones that I've purchased that I haven't started yet. So five diamond paintings at one time so that I don't end up with a full closet of diamond paintings. And then um, I've decided to do the same thing with the cross stitch because the cross stitch is going to take me a lot longer than the diamond paintings will. Um, so because I'm still a pretty slow stitcher because I'm still fairly new at it. Um, so I've got right now, I've got my Hogwarts and then I have the Badger, the Lion and the Raven, the Eagle. And, um, I also have my, um, oh, what is it called? What is homegirl's name? Let's see. I also have one like that that I got for free off of um, Pinterest, I believe. And it is a, uh, it's Hermione and Crookshanks. So I have that one as well. And then I have a whole lot on my wish list that I will get when they are available. So yeah, let's see. Is it in here? Here they are. Look at that. So that is the eagle and the lion for Gryffindor. And it is much darker, it's a much darker red than what it looks like on the camera. So, and I think, honestly, I think the lion might be my favorite, but the badger is awfully, awfully cute. So, yep, those are the two. The other two that I have. So for right now, I'm not buying any more. Um, I'm just going to work on what I have. I do need to get back to diamond painting. I still have um, my Victoria's Moon that I haven't finished yet, you guys. Like it's that bad. Like I had to stop it and do other projects for Christmas. And I just haven't gone back to diamond painting since Christmas. So it's kind of getting, I'm, you know, I'm kind of running out of space and excuses <laughs> not to diamond paint so elizabeth says you were the queen of resisting i have five diamond paintings on the ground floor and maybe 25 downstairs in the craft room wow well so part of the problem elizabeth is i just don't have the space um i don't want to store them and i'm also one of those people like i find something and i really like it and then three months later when i go back i don't like it as much 
So I don't want to buy a bunch and have them sitting in my house for, you know, six months or a year and then get to them and find out I don't like them as well as I thought I did. So that's another one of the big things for me um, about buying. And other houses, what did you say, Audie? Yeah, my poor baby blanket is just not getting uh, any kind of attention whatsoever. I've pretty much exclusively only been stitching on this one. Uh, Aubra says, I have too many wish lists with too many things listed. I'm a great wisher, apparently. We'll see, and that's me. I mean, I can wish for all the things that I want to wish for, and it doesn't affect my pocketbook. So, but I do have a lot of self-control. I know that one. I do know that. All right, you guys, let's see here. No, no creepy clowns. Let's not clown each other like that. So Anita does a diamond painting a week and she's so addicted. You just started, didn't you, Anita? I think I saw that uh, in somebody's chat or possibly in a comment that you left maybe on somebody's channel that you were, you were fairly new to diamond painting or am I getting you confused with someone else? <laughs> yeah, Abra is working on slash the set stash 2020. I don't want to know how many stashes she's got. You are. Okay. That's what I thought. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of new to cross stitching. I've kind of been obsessed with it here lately and I'm taking a break from diamond painting just because I'd gotten so burned out. I had done all big ones last year and I think I did, did I do seven big ones last year? Like over 50 by 70. I think so. I needed a little bit of a break, y'all. No lie. Um, I'm going to go back to, I've got to finish this. I really need to catch up and get this done because it's fixing to be too warm to stitch here before too long. Okay. So let's talk about um, those of you that are going on retreat with us um, in that group on Saturday morning. I will be doing a live stream on Facebook only for those people that are in that group. Um, and we'll be talking about those things there. And then um, this weekend, I'm probably going to sleep some more to try to hopefully get rid of all of this, whatever this allergic to Tennessee thing is happening over here. And then um, next weekend, you guys, starting the first weekend in March, I have something every single weekend throughout the beginning, throughout the first weekend of April. So it's going to be a full month of Sundays, basically. Um, I have something planned. So some of it will be fun. So we have Irish Fest the first weekend in March, and we have a wedding the second weekend. Sherman Highland Games, so more men in kilts the third weekend. And then we have, I think it's the Super Regional. I think it's one of Zoe's competitions. And then we're going to go down to San Antonio for the first weekend in April, and that's the weekend that I'll hopefully get to go see the venue for our retreat and there is a uh one of the famous uh youtubers that uh is in the floss tube community <coughs> excuse me is uh they have, their shop is down by san antonio and we technically have to go through there through the town it's called buda b-u-d-a um buda texas and so i'm thinking if we do have to go through there i might make us kind of have to go through there um i'm going to stop there and get some um um at least get a look at their shop and i did notice driving home today a lot of you guys know i have like a soccer park and base uh, softball fields across from me where i live and it looks like they have out one of the traveling uh, memorial walls for soldiers. So I may stop by over there tomorrow. And I think it's here through Sunday. Um, so we'll see how I feel in the next couple of days. But I may stop by and get some video of that. They have out the flags. They have the huge wall out. Um, I'll have to kind of see what it is. And hopefully I can get you guys some footage of that. So just to let you guys know, I do have a couple of videos on my phone. I'm having trouble getting off my phone because I'm out of space. So I'm going to have to like delete some things. Um, but I will be getting you some videos posted 
and um, I will be filming you some videos. So just kind of bear with me. You guys know I'm I'm one of those people that I'm always busy. Um, so hopefully, um, if you guys want to see anything, you will let me know. Um, I'm going to try to be around a little bit more if I can, uh, you know, and all of that kind of stuff. So if you see me, say hi. Um, if not, I will see you guys back here next week. Remember to count your blessings, to practice gratitude, and to write down your Wednesday wins so that you are ready for those next week when I surprise everybody with your Wednesday wins. <laughs> Welcome back, Abra. All right, you guys, I'm getting off here because my voice is starting to get really croaky. And I'm probably going to go crawl in my bed and watch Netflix. So... As much as I love you guys, I really love my bed and Netflix. Um, so I'm going to say to all of you that are here, thank you. Thank you to the lurkers for coming. Um, those of you that are going to watch this on the replay, please let me know if you have any questions. Put all that stuff down in the description box below. No, you can't write in the description box. Put it in the comments below. Uh, please hit that like button on your way out. If you are not subscribed, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It's somewhere. Um, and ring that cowbell so you get some notifications because everybody needs more cowbell in their lives, right? And you guys, until I see you next week, please have a good week. Please be safe. Try to stay healthier than I am right now. And thank you so much for coming and joining me. I really, truly appreciate it. Um, and for our final thing, until I see you next time, guys, remember to craft like someone left the barn door open. Night, guys. <coughs> Just, you know, for that. <laughs> good night. Love you guys. Thank you so much for coming. Y'all have a good week. Let me know about it. Post things on Instagram. Let me get off. Oh my gosh. Okay.